Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today, we are showcasing the newest campaign on the Spark site, and that is, of course, all about Sunday. Before I introduce them, I'd quickly like to mention a campaign that we just did before Christmas, and that was the med device company called Origin. We raised 1.5 million uh, for them in 21 days from just over 270 investors. It just demonstrates uh, the crowd's ability to raise significant funds in a very short time frame. So thanks to many of the investors who invested in Origin, many of whom are on the call today. And uh, so thank you very much for that. But on to today's business. All About Sunday is all about quality, unique content for horse racing fans. Interviews with jockeys and trainers, data from gallops and races, all content that is not available anywhere else. Soccer has MUTV, horse racing now has All About Sunday. The company is already generating revenues uh, in 2022, just last closing uh, in December. The turnover is, was in, in excess of uh, 390,000 euros. Subscriptions have now grown to over 4,400 uh, people, all on the back of almost zero marketing spend. Darren and the team have built up a very slick technology stack that not only delivers the unique content to members in a very concise way, but also uh, it's, it's also very easy for the content provider to upload and distribute the unique insights to the subscription base. Media companies are already showing great interest in what All About Sunday is providing and can see the scalability of such a platform. The company is EAAS qualifying, meaning that, meaning that investments quali qualify for 40% tax rebate from the government through the revenue commissioners as a, an incentive for you to invest in the business. This, of course, effectively get, brings down the valuation from 2 million to 1.2 million, making it a very, very uh, investable proposition. I'd now like to introduce you to Darren McGrath, CEO of All About Sunday. Darren, if you could turn your camera on, please. Thank you very much, Darren. Darren is a digital marketing specialist and was founder and CEO of Brando Advertising Agency. The agency won a myriad of national and international awards for their work. Darren had a successful exit from this business in 2016. Since that time, Darren has been formulating the idea for, of All About Sunday and has put a large amount of time and resource into getting the business to where we see today. Darren, you're very welcome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, in a second, I'll ask you to uh, put, on your, uh, put up your um, presentation. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, if anybody has any questions, please put them into the Q&A function at the bottom of, you'll see at the bottom of the page there. Uh, we'll take any questions from anybody who wants to uh, ask them. Um, we've already got a couple in that already that have uh, been emailed <coughs> in through to us. Uh, but uh, Darren, if you'd like to share your screen, uh, you can go, go ahead with the presentation and I'll see you when you finish. Great stuff. Chris, thanks very much. Um, that's gone full screen there now. It's perfect. Perfect, Darren. <clears throat> Where you go. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Um, and thanks for taking your time out just to, uh, to come through the presentation with me today. I think at the very beginning of the presentation, guys, there's just a couple of things that I would like to, to communicate um, just so that, you know, we, we set the, the right tone at the beginning. In relation to All About Sunday, this isn't a racehorse syndicate uh, product, and I need to be very, very clear about that. In the same way that Netflix isn't a film production company, they're a streaming entertainment company. We're a sports entertainment company that monetizes fan engagement. And I think that that's kind of one of the, the, the key things for, for us to say at the beginning, along with the fact that even though <clears throat> I would be um, an avid racing fan, have been for years, love it, to, to be honest with you. It's not a passion project either or, or anything like that. This is really about uh, monetizing fan engagement and using uh, technology to, to do it. Overall, you know, just before this call began, um, I got a phone call from somebody quite close to the project and close to myself. And they asked me, you know, how I was feeling and was I confident? And I thought that that was an interesting question. I didn't have time to, to chat specifically about it. But um, in terms of being confident, I suppose, like what is confidence? And uh, confidence is the complete absence of doubt. And at this point, 
you know, from the work that we have put in, there's only three people that are working full time in, in All About Sunday. And please keep that in mind as I go through this, this presentation. There'd be a complete absence of doubt in terms of this project as an investable proposition and the potential that it has in the future to be successful. So why can you go and say something like that? I think, you know, a lot of it comes from experience in my own career. And when I was working across all sorts of different projects, I was very lucky to bump into what I would kind of describe as elite business performers. And everything that I show you today, it's very easy as the founder and the CEO to say, oh, to say, oh, to say that it, to say that it's argue that very little of, of it is. It's all a result of engaging the right level of person at the right point during the journey to bring the whole project um, to, to the fore. So, you know, in the very beginning to make sure that we got everything off on the, on the right foot, I would have engaged what I would see as one of the best uh, consumer brand strategic planners in Ireland. And I would have worked very closely with him and talking to racehorse syndicate members, owners, etc., to really understand what the consumer thinks about horse racing and to really understand what they think about syndicates. And I just went to him with a very simple idea. I wanted to, to buy a horse. I wanted to break it into small pieces and I wanted to sell an entertainment experience around that. So how are we going to do it and how are we going to do it digitally? And it kind of has brought us to, to, to the point where, you know, we've built a, an app based platform, which is basically selling the racehorse ownership experience through unique gated content. And that was really, you know, the, the articulation of what was quite a simple idea that I want people to be able to purchase something. Uh, within the horse racing experience and then have different layers in terms of single payment subscriptions and bundles. Um, Jay, when I was working with them, as I say, spoke to an awful lot of uh, owners, syndicate members, racehorse club people uh, to identify and understand exactly what the problem was. And the, the feeling really from people is that kind of the traditional syndicate or owner um, doesn't get enough content in terms of their experience and that they know themselves that the race is only part of the journey and that they would like more access to the trainer, to the gallops and to the yards. And because they don't get these things, it makes it kind of less attractive a proposition for a mass audience. So you'd have a number of people that would uh, be interested in in the product, but because of these problems, these three specific problems, you know, there isn't what I would call mass adoption. So the next thing that we did was we got a very good understanding as to what the size of the target market stroke opportunity is. And from our research, we know that any uh, tech projects that really scale well and scale very quickly do so in businesses where there's a high level of existing revenue. So Deliveroo would be an example um, in relation to restaurants. Uh, Uber would be an example in, in relation to, to the taxi industries. And we were shocked to see that owners across Ireland and the UK annually actually spend uh, over 500 million at the minute in terms of buying horses, training horses and racing horses. So there's there's an existing market out there of, of half a million. Um, what became even more surprising was there's actually only 18,500 owners or syndicates that are in Ireland and the UK, whereas there's 7 million people that pay in terms of buying a ticket to go through the turnstiles to watch racing every single year. So we were taking the view that really there's 18 and a half thousand people um, involved in ownership, but there's a target market of um, 7 million people. So that kind of brought us to the point of, OK, let's understand what the problem is. Let's understand the target market and let's get our head around what we felt the solution was the solution was going to be. Um, and I think the solution has ended up being, you know, uh, tech driven and relatively simple. Uh, give people more of an experience in terms of ownership and syndication, upgrade that experience in terms of immersive content and give them something different in terms of unique 
uh, content and unique data. Again, looking at the different uh, propositions around the world that have succeeded, uh, when there is something unique, that acts, acts as a magnet to bring people towards the app or towards the project. So, you know, give them more, upgrade the experience and give them something unique. So at that point, we had to go off and we had to try and figure out you know, how we were going to go about doing this. And the first thing that All About Sunday did was we, we built a prototype. And to build a prototype, I actually flew uh, two uh, developers that I had worked with in a previous life from Brazil over to Ireland. Um, I rented an Airbnb apartment for them and I organized a service that apartment from laundry and food and diet and all of that type of stuff. And for two weeks, the three of us got stuck in to building a prototype for what is now on sale as All About Sunday. And all we were thinking about were these four different categories that you can see on the screen. Make it easy for somebody to buy. Give them the access that they're looking for. Give them access to their horses on the gallops and give them something unique in terms of the performance analysis. And all of these things are currently on the app and are, are as a result of looking through the problem, understanding the target market, and then being able to create it. So like every good tech project, you have to then make sure that you're simplifying it in terms of its cost of delivery. And you gotta make sure that you're building it in terms of its scalability. So we can take it you know, through Ireland into the UK and beyond. And as part and parcel of what we've done, and it's one of the important things to communicate here is that, there are no huge production teams. I'm sitting in a content studio that we have built that cost the huge sum of 680 euros. We have built the ability to create the content on a mobile device. So in theory, if Frankie Dottori was writing a piece of work for us, we would be able to sit into the car beside him, do an interview with him before the piece of work, edit it and post it, video um, the piece of work and then interview him afterwards and do all of it without having the cost of sound people, you know, um, production facilities, et cetera, et cetera. So we have our solution that was within the four categories that we knew were solving the problem. And now we have the tech in terms of the mobile centric content creation to allow us to do that. When we were building that, um, we bumped into the idea then of being able to live stream. So within the app, not only do we have um, the ability to record, edit, and then to broadcast, we now have our own version of an Instagram Live or a YouTube Live that we have built over the last uh, 12 months. So again, referring back to what the problem is and why people were choosing not to get involved in horse racing in huge numbers, we've basically built the platform that commoditizes the experience. And we've done that in a very strategic way so that we answer any of the potential barriers to, to entry. From here, I think the, the next and most important thing really was, was going to be in relation to our understanding of the revenue and business model. And to do that, I worked with a lady um, that in private equity in London um, that I'd worked with previously. And I remember bringing all of my initial ideas in, in relation to the model and the spend and how it was all going to work, et cetera, to her. And she kind of, she took it away over a period of a couple of weeks and basically turned it upside down, shook it around and kind of said, look, in a very nice way, I understand the way you're thinking, but this is how sports brands are actually coming at this problem. And what she did in terms of this piece of work and with investors, in the future, we can go through the very, very long deck. But what she actually showed was how Formula One football, uh, football brands, rugby brands and golf brands were understanding the value of the fans that they have. And they were monetizing the engagement that they were generating across digital platforms. So if we take Ferrari here as an example, they would have in total 180 fans, followers, you know, at all of their different touch points. The way that they're looking at it is 
at the minute they're generating um, one dollar twenty on average from all of those fans in terms of spend. Look across the rest of the brands you have: Paris Saint Germain, you have the Wallabies, you have uh, U.S. Golf. And you can see that the different brands are achieving different levels of success in terms of the average revenues that they're driving from their fans. And the line then that goes across the bottom is probably one of the more interesting ones, because it's what percentage now is commercial revenue through fan engagement driving as a percentage of the overall revenue for these sports brands. And you can see the big variance in 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 some cases, but the very high numbers in terms of say Barcelona, uh, Paris Saint Germain, Ferrari, uh, PGA is is quite low. And I spoke to um, Mariam at length about my view of the NBA and my view of Manchester United. And what she actually did was, you know, simplify for us as we were creating our business model the approach that these thought leaders take. And I would say that I do think that whatever about Manchester United's performance on the pitch over the last 10 or 15 years, how they're digitizing content is absolutely exceptional. And what they do is really, really simple. The name of their training ground is uh, Carrington, and they have turned Carrington into a content creation hub. So each day there's three or four staff members with either small cameras or with mobile phones that are recording training, recording interviews with uh, the manager, members of the team, the physios, etc. And they're taking that simple content and they're then placing that content on the Manchester United app. NBA is doing exactly the same. They've got the on-court which would be the matches that are televised. And then they got the practice court, which is where they do everything behind the scenes. They have simple teams creating content, <clears throat> uploading that content, and then charging for it. So from working with Mariam, I was able to take the initial idea that I had from a revenue model, come at it from exactly the same way as these big premium sports brands are, and really understanding how they were making money through the conversion from fan into paying customer. After that, then, I worked with our COO, Johnny Ingle, and the two of us would be marketeers in terms of, in terms of our background. And we wanted to make everything really, really simple as to how people can purchase. And where we've ended up to today with All About Sunday is that the product itself arguably is a hybrid of how people purchase mobile phone products, plus the subscription product that the Manchester United's and the MBAs of this world would be, um, would be selling. So we've now got um, pay up front, we've got bundles, and we've got subscriptions that allow people to buy very, very easily in up to five racehorses. And what we've generated in terms of revenue is 390,000. And again, I'll go back to the point uh, between three people, myself, two techies, and then I'd intermittently use different contractors. That's all that we've been, you know, had so far to be able to generate that level of income. The, um, the model then is displayed through the app and through the website. As I say, pay up front, subscription, five horse bundles, um, having the background that I have in terms of advertising and design, it costs us absolutely nothing to create all of these different layers and different levels. And it brings us to, to a point where we experienced through 2022, the validation or the traction for the overall proposition. Now, this is a difficult kind of slide to present because if you say to me, you know, what do you think of the results? I think the results are nothing short of incredible. I think that we've only generated 8,073 downloads. We've converted 4,433 of those downloads to paying customers. There's about 2,500 in Ireland and 1,875 in the UK. They're spending that amount of money and we've got partnerships with three elite trainers. But the other side of 
my point of view is this is really only scratching the surface. So the results are absolutely incredible out of the number of downloads. If we go back to the size of the, the opportunity, the target market, et cetera, like you're looking at 8,073 downloads out of a potential 7 million. Now, you know, this is why we're, we're here with, with, with you guys um, to be looking to secure the investment. And then it's a case of what exactly are we going to invest the funds in? And very simply, we've got to be able to scale up on our content creation and all of our marketing. And how we're going to spend that money is all about being able to convert it into paying customers. Just to give you a context, we spent £16,000 sterling this year with one part-time marketing cont contractor. Darren is his name. And he's absolutely excellent at what he does. I will, I will, I will give him that. He's brilliant. But we only spent £16,000. In terms of content creation, we only spent £22,000. And all of the analytics show us the more content that you create, the more ads that fall out of that content, the more conversions that you get. And we're converting for every euro that we're spending, we're getting four euro 60 cents back in terms of revenue. And it's only costing us 24 euros to acquire a customer. And I'll kind of pause about that just for a second. 24 euros to acquire a customer. And that is translating itself at the minute into 390,000 euros of revenue. I think the question kind of is why? I think we've been methodical. I think we've been strategic. And I think that this success has been a byproduct of the people that we have brought in at each of the individual junctures to deliver input without working necessarily full time on this project. We bring the right people in at the right time and we basically turn the business gently each time to achieve the results that we need, that we need to achieve. And when you get to kind of having 15 years or 16 years under your belt, and as I was saying, this is kind of an amalgamation of elite people that I have bumped into over the last 10 or 15 years that I talk to about all about Sunday on an ongoing basis. And they're all very different characters. But the one thing that they all have in common at this point of their career is that they can succinctly explain to you exactly, you know, based on the information that you give them, obviously, they can succinctly explain to you exactly what um your options are in terms of next, you know, what you should do next, how you should look at it, what this means, where it would go. And the first person within the team that I would refer to is Keith O'Loughlin from JKO Capital. Um, Keith would have raised four billion, uh, you know, as, as, as part of a, um, a, a buyout in 2021. I'd safely say in terms of time, Keith is probably the person that I spend the least amount of time talking with but he's the person that gives you a really dialed up insight into the subscription world and the monetization of those products. The next person that I would talk to regularly is David Berber. David Berber is a FIFA agent and is heavily involved in the sports entertainment industry. So if we have discussions ourselves as to where we're going to take this and where we're going to, to turn it, we have somebody there at hand that can actually ground the thinking very simply in another three, four, five minute conversation and tell us exactly what's going on in the sports industry at that, at you know, the day to day level. Myself and Johnny Ingle talk regularly and um, probably, you know, in terms of having the the, the marketing side to, to, to bottom out. But the insight that Johnny was able to give within a three or a four day pe period rebuilding a product matrix and, you know, structuring the products to drive profitability was huge. And I suppose the last person we can see, you know, there's plenty of people there would be Rory. Um, Rory's been involved since, you know, the last 18 months, has raised 50 million uh, on two separate occasions and has um, generated value, uh, created value in companies of, of 500 million. So, what I have to do really 
is to be the person that listens, understands, takes back the key insights and the key pieces of information and works with the teams to convert those key pieces of information into, into revenue. And I think that that's what we've done. Um, I was quite fascinated really at the detail that, that Mariam went into in terms of the original model that she did. And one of the things about it was I always worked on the basis that the model was uh, going to be wrong, but it was how wrong was the model going to be. And where we've ended up is in a place where we are seeing the ARPUs jumping from 69 to 149 euros on an ongoing basis. Um, and with this amount of subscribers, with that amount of spend, the fact that we don't have any um, debt on the balance sheet, I think these are huge points from an investor's perspective. The last couple of points I will make is, even though there are plenty of syndicates out there, you can see the white space that we have. If we go from low cost to high cost um, on the vertical access and low engagement to high engagement, we are streets ahead of what anybody else is doing. These companies, some of them are generating already up to 5 million in annual turnover, and they don't have any tech. Um, from that, you know, I, I think um, in terms of the investment, we can see to date, if we check on, on the site, you know, the raise is going particularly well. So thank you very much to the guys from Spark. Um, and hopefully maybe through the questions we can go into, you know, a little bit of detail in terms of how we're going to spend that money, go into some further detail. But from your perspective as potential investors, all of the sports media publications will be watching this. The racing posts, the racing TVs, the jockey clubs, the American companies like TVG. That's where we will expect to generate a trade sale from in the next uh, three to five years. You can see here what the 15 million annual revenues uh, target will be by uh, 2025. The ambition to have up to um, 50 horses in training and the number of subscribers. The technology is what's going to facilitate that, guys. And I would be very happy for everyone to join us on this journey. Great stuff. Great Darren. stuff. Darren. Thank you very much indeed. Great presentation and uh, superbly put across. And I think that hopefully explains uh, the, more about the business model for the uh, for the investors. So, uh, so great. So if you could stop sharing your screen, please, we'll uh, go into the questions. Down. Um, there's been a whole host of them that have come in. Um, uh, so thanks very much for those. And we'll go through them uh, in turn. So, uh, right. First of all, how much does it cost to acquire a new customer? I think you mentioned that already, uh, Darren. Uh, and how much lifetime revenue will you generate from each user? If you could tell us that, please. Yeah, look, we're we're only operational 12 months, really, in, in terms of selling the shares. So we're seeing the ARPU, the entry level spend is 69. Uh, we've seen it grow to, um, you know, 140. Sorry, perhaps you can just tell us what ARPU stands for. Some people won't uh, understand that term. Average revenue per user. So how much they basically would spend themselves. So within a six-month period, they're growing from 69 to 149 euros and i think now that we're after we launched we worked all over christmas to launch the uh, the bundle products the bundle products have a much higher price point of uh, 259 and 169 pounds so the lifetime value that we will be expecting is 225 euros over the next 12 months now if we can retain an acquisition cost through excellent content and excellent mark marketing in and around your 24 25 to 30 35 this will be an extremely profitable business so your acquisition cost is 24 25 euros lifetime value or ARPU value is 225 so making a 200 euro uh, delta on that uh, on that cost yes yeah. correct but there's a there's a follow on to that is this business model simply as injecting new funds to acquire new clients from which you'll generate higher returns i think you've answered that as a as a, as a yes yeah, people people and marketing budget is is what we need, and it'll revolve around content and marketing. 
Um, hi Darren. Yeah. Um, so I have one here. What is the go-to-market marketing strategy um, regarding acquisition of new customers? Uh, divided into three different components, you will have paid social, um, affiliates, which are uh, the the big the big net networks, and the big thing for us in 2023 is going to be distribution partnerships so your racing posts your irishracing.coms your sporting life um we were only scratching the surface in terms of the early doors conversation so we'll keep it very very simple three channels um your paid social your affiliates and your partnerships excellent Okay, uh, another question here. How uh, developed is the technology today and how do you plan to scale the business to meet the demand? Everything that I presented today is um, completed, if, they, if that's the right word, has been developed. Um, it's all in beta versions um, if it hasn't been put live as, as yet. So we've invested in the technology and waited until we're at this point uh, to... Uh, raise the funding to create the success. So anything that I've shown people, they can they can see it on the app today. Brilliant. Um, and I have actually a very good uh, following question for that. How protected is the technology and the IP, Darren? Um, we've only started to have a look at that um, to see if there is an opportunity to patent the work that we're doing in relation to the mobile centric content creation. So the little Frankie Dottori analogy there is something that we're looking into because if, if you take any big digital publication, either sports or otherwise, the idea of a content creator being able to just sit with somebody and then broadcast that video or article, you know, immediately afterwards is something that would be extremely valuable to them because they work with editorial teams, content teams, production teams currently. So uh, that is that is a task for us in the immediate future uh, for us to look into and identify if there's an opportunity to 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 patent it all right thanks okay um with your valuation of two million euros if after if you hit your three-year uh profit targets what valuation do you think the business will have yeah i think that's a that's a very good question in, in, in the current market. So what, what I think I have to do is, is come across as being, I hope I've come across anyway, as being completely grounded in terms of the strategy. You know, we, we would be um, working to a, a gross margin of approximately 56% is what we would be hoping for at that time with an earnings percentage of 41%. If we were to achieve those, which everything that we have done today is showing us that we can, and if we turned over the 15 million that we're projecting, 41% earnings is going to deliver six and a half million. Now, this is where we'll get into the discussion. It's how you want to value that six and a half million. So for the purpose of the conversation here today, let's apply a, a multiple of eight. And that's really, you're looking at, at a 50 to 55 million euro valuation. And I think that, you know, we'd probably have to have a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and people lock horns about that as of today in January 2023. But as we've uh, already, or as you've already uh, highlighted, there are significant people, uh, significant businesses uh, interested in the business already in so much that the uh, the media the media companies around the world already kind of uh, not not kind of having engaged with you, but certainly keeping an eye on what All About Sunday is doing and how it's developing as well. Yes, not just uh, the publishers, but also the racing bodies um, in, in different countries, because this is an opportunity to scale the racing product. And therefore, there will be an appetite from governing bodies to, to assist. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Um, question here on the risks. So, you know, hitting those targets, you know, what, what do you see is the, the biggest risks, uh, Darren, in the next kind of 12, 24 months? I think that um, digital marketing is the key uh, pillar for what we need to, to do next. So everything that we're going to be focused on really has to be around the success around that pillar. 
So if is that a risk or is it a focus area? I would say it's a focus area. And if we go back to the team, we've got the right people in place with the right levels of experience within the sports industry and beyond to ensure that we deliver on the marketing objectives and continue to acquire a customer at those rates. Like I can't kind of over egg this enough. We have one guy that a 16,000 pounds cost annually. And that one guy basically has delivered nearly 400,000 in, in, in revenue. What we got to do is replicate that skill set and that will scale, will scale the business. So sometimes I have to pinch myself to go look at how little we've actually spent in terms of the 22 grand on content creation, the 16 grand in terms of the, the, the marketing expertise and the investment that we raise, we will be looking to bring in four FTEs into the marketing department. And once we then have the content that comes back from the racing yards and we can convert that content into marketing materials, we will without doubt convert at that continued rate. So the, the different steps that we're taking are bringing us to the point where we will be able to use our own horses to create our own materials to then go and sell. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, you've indicated that the business is starting off in Ireland and the UK, but uh, what percentage of the business do you expect to come from outside of Ireland and the UK uh, uh, after the three years? I think that's that that's a that's a very good question. Um, the ambitions are for the US, um, Australia, and Asia. Um, we've built a platform so that. It, it can be multilingual and we can lift and shift it in terms of different languages. Um, and then it will be just down to having different content presenters and horses in place in those locations. The ambition has to be for the States. I think it's the sexiest market at the minute because of the hybrid that will end up between sports content and betting as the legislation changes within America and the betting opportunities open open up there um you asked me to, to give a percentage i would feel that we'll end up maybe in that 10 percent space or 15 percent space for ireland and the, and the uk you know your platform is a lift and shift there there are no hundreds of people required now to take it to australia or to take it to argentina or any other countries that are very very strong you know and i think that one of the things that might come through from the presentation overall is kind of, it isn't necessary to focus all the time on the horses. I think that what we need to focus on here is our ability to use the technology to create the content. And when we read over all of the work that the NBA do and that Manchester United do, you know, it's the commercialization of the fan through this entertainment, which transfers through many geographical um, regions. Um, just a question on competition here, Darren. Um, who are your biggest competitors and is there room for all of you? Um, the, the two biggest competitors would be the American company, My Racehorse, that have recently entered the Irish and UK market. And they've, they've also entered Australia and they've also entered Bahrain. So that's an incredible signpost in itself. Owners Group are probably the biggest in the UK at the minute, but in terms of them being a danger to us, we've we've got our unique selling points. We've got our differentiators. If you look back over any in industry as it evolves, there is always the requirement for new market entrants to fuel awareness and to fuel consumer understanding of new products. So plenty more entrants may enter the market and I wouldn't have a concern about them in the sense that we have the technology, nobody else has technology at our level. And the role that they would play on our behalf is to drive knowledge um, and awareness um, of these types of products and this entertainment experience. Good. Um, what is the likely exit for an investor? And we kind of mentioned this earlier, or you mentioned this earlier on, and who would uh, buy you out and why? 
I think you're looking at in terms of a time frame. I think we have to have a three to five year um, time frame in our in, in our mind. Um, with the, if you look at any of the big sports publications, they have to be your tier one uh, prospect suitor. After that, any of the sports betting publications, because of the change, the regulatory change in the UK and Ireland in relation to the advertising of betting products, mm -hmm. sports betting publication companies will need new products to be able to backfill the, uh, the gap that that is going to create. And then they themselves would see it as an opportunity to cross sell within their, within their existing customer base. Um, from uh, sports publications through to the betting publishers, any of the other me media publication companies are your potential suitors. Um, I think, you know, any brand that can sit in front of you today and have a 55% conversion rate from downloads to uh, sales is extraordinary. And I probably didn't mention that, that, that enough as we went through the presentation. Um, a standard conversion rate would be 1% to 3%. And we've got over half of our people that are downloading the product are actually going on to make a purchase. You know, all we got to do is work on taking that 8,000 number and making it 15,000, 25,000 and beyond and working hard to hold the metrics. And that's where the value will be. Yeah, that 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 number that uh, that uh, that you just cited there, you know, eight thousand downloads, four thousand kind of people, you know, fifty odd percent. It's over fifty percent, I think, uh, from remember from memory, seeing those numbers. So it's a significant conversion of downloads to people actually buying, which is uh, which is great. No, it's huge. I, I think you know a company like Racing TV in the UK has um, sixty thousand customers. So within quite a a, a short period of time and 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 they're huge because of the number of products that they sell sure. um you know for us to have four thousand customers within a 12-month window is is pretty good yeah okay um very good question here just on the marketing budgets um i understand the scaling of marketing acquisition budget but how much do you see the content costs increasing by overall in the model um, we would be looking to invest just fractionally over um, 500,000 in, in 2023. When I look at the content creation budget within that, we will be looking to scale it five times. So it's at 21, 22,000 at the minute. And that cost is really going to be the people cost that you need to go around to the different locations that would be trainers, yards, gallops, and, um, you know, potentially to the races themselves. So it'll be a 5x in terms of the, of the content cost. But as we've created all of the tech that does it in a mobile-centric way, we, we, we won't and um, we won't be bringing in trucks and vans and wires and people and you know all of that type of stuff excellent okay um your arpus look strong uh can you explain the expected growth in these arpus from 69 to 149 and the factors that will drive this growth you've kind of touched on this already but it'd be good just to have a little bit more on that if you can please darren yes um at the min at at the moment uh, we would have a 70-30 bias in terms of male-female purchasers. But in the sale of bundle products, so the multiple horses, there's an 80-20 bias to the female customer. So the female customer has been left out, I suppose, in this kind of horse racing world in some ways. And we can see initially that there is a huge appetite um, with, with, within the female market to be spending a higher amount uh, in terms of the bundles that, that, they, that they purchase. And the data that we have coming through the marketing team you know, is going to be allowing us to target by gender, by demographic, by geographical re region, by different ad, etc. We've done all that donkey work. We've made, you know, campaigns for different locations and then compared them to other campaigns for diff other ge geographical locations and identified where the scale can actually take place. 
Excellent. Do we have time for another question, Chris? Yeah, go on one more. Yeah. Um, so if all about Sunday were to identify or highlight one requirement that would supercharge the business, um, what would that requirement be? Um, good question. Solid mm. last question. Thank you. I would I, I, I would say a strategic partnership. A, a strategic partnership with one of the big publishers that, that I've already mentioned that we're currently working on. That would give us access and them to the traffic uh, that they would all already have. And if we were then to retain the conversion rates uh, that we have succeeded over 12 months, not in a short period, then that would supercharge the business at a level that um, would, would drive a huge level of return. Solid last question. Excellent. Okay, thanks very much, Fergal. And uh, listen, I, I, we've got loads more questions that have come in, and uh, we just won't have the time to go through them all. So we'll answer those offline as we as we always do, and publish them on the site. So uh, so thanks very much for all of those questions. Um, so yes, and we've heard from Darren, and I think you'll agree that all about Sunday is worth serious consideration for an investment. Remember that the company is an EIS qualifying company, so investments receive a forty percent tax rebate, as we've mentioned. And if you'd like to uh, have a follow up with with Darren on a one to one, uh, just get get in touch with either Fergal, myself, or Melissa, and we can arrange for that to happen uh, over a Zoom or even face to face if ne if necessary as well. So please get in touch with us about that. So thanks very much for everybody, and uh, we'll see you all again soon. Darren, thanks very much. Fergal, thanks very much, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Take care.